thank you. It's good to be here together with you, Rob, and together with everyone else. Um, so I've been around in the company for almost, uh, I would say, nine years. I started up as a management consultant. Uh, about nine years ago, I think, I met the head of the board. And then in the end of that process, they offered me to be a part of Sincino like uh, Life. So then I went uh, in January, like eight years and three, four months ago, I became the CEO. And it has been an amazing journey going from selling coffee to nutrition that we stumbled over the balance test and test-based nutrition. Um, I think it's like seven years ago. And then we bought a factory five years ago and we fully bought the, the company that owned the rights to the balance test. So we, we integrated that into the company. And we, of course, you know now, we bought a new company in Asia, VMR Life, that we're going to talk about during this presentation. So I've been around for eight years and it has been fun, almost nine now, as I said. So uh, it's great. And we have... Uh, Expanded our business to a lot of new markets, which is also one of my dreams, personal dreams, I would say. And Doug, if you take that, okay, as uh, what you've done and you've, uh, you know, you've really spectacularly done the things in Zenzino that most people would dream of, okay? You sent the comp company public, okay, which uh, this is the number one reason why when I got invited to look at the company was because it was a publicly traded company. Can you talk about how special that is and uh, why you believe publicly traded is very important in this industry? Well, I like to word, use the word we instead of I. So uh, uh, it was public traded before I entered and we were in a small stock and change in the beginning of the, um, I think it was in the end of uh, 2009 or 2010. And then we uh, entered the Nasdaq list in 2015, and that has been a process of a lot of people involved. And I think the original idea from the founders and the board was that we want to make sure that we are transparent, make sure that, that we are a company that everyone, so when you look at that, if you can hold up that annual report, the last one from last year, um, when you read all those, you see the numbers where the, the editors, PricewaterhouseCoopers, so it's fully transparent in all the numbers you can see. But that's one of the reasons. The second reason, and, or maybe the first reason, is that everyone, our partners and uh, employees and everyone around Cincino can own a part of Cincino and be a part of that growth success. And, and it's publicly traded, so when you buy a share or sell a share, you, you can get the pricing and the evaluation on it uh, as the market sets. So yeah. being, being a public traded company has its benefits. And of course, it's, it's, it's some work and more work, but we, we've done this for about 10 years now. So we got a lot of experience in that area as well. And you've, you saw the, new, the newest annual report. Um, the good thing is my CFO, I met him today and he was already starting on the quarter one report, so just finalize the first report and then the next day, new report. So it's four reports per year plus an annual report. Look, and it's, I, I believe it's fantastic when you can uh, evaluate a company that you're about to build or even if you're a customer looking at it. And I think particularly today with the amount of um, different types of companies that are out there promoting wellness, okay, uh, to have a look at what we offer as Enzino, to see that we own the manufacturing plant, to see that the science is all owned, the technology is all owned by the company. I think that's, a, you know, from your side, I think that's just massive credibility for you. Well, it's, it, it's, it's teamwork. So it's all our uh, benefits, the companies and everyone who works, and the partners. So I'm extremely proud that we are sourcing the ingredients from different uh, places all around the world and we put it together as you say in the factory we own the, the brand and everything and we sell the products so we're going from end to end in that sense and and owning our own destiny um, and that is of course um, a big advantage i would say and being so customer centric as we are since you know it's amazing to understand and know uh, how we do the process of manufacturing and delivering the products. So we, 
we're quite in a good situation with that set. Also, and look, and here's, here's a million dollar question, okay, Doug, okay? And if I lean forward, I just need to whisper, okay? Um, <laughs> is, it, is it a good time to buy shares or not? All right, you don't have to answer that, Doug. I know you have, you know, my, my uh, answer to that is, and that is, um, uh, I never comment on the share price. Um, so um, that's the only thing I'm doing. But what I do know, Rob, is that we have um, developed ourselves over the last uh, 15 years and the last eight, nine years that I've been a part of since they know. We are steadily growing. You saw the figures for quarter one in March. We are growing despite of the COVID-19 and everything around us. We are growing into new markets. We're developing new products. I just came from a product development meeting. We're test-based nutrition. Um, and we've done amazing. And we have great partners, um, amazing partners, and we see that the expansion from different markets now is really getting into us. And with all the things that we're planning for you, both the United States, but also for Africa and opening India and opening Russia and opening Hong Kong and partly part of uh, Asia, I think that uh, we, have a, we have a dream of having 1 million customers by 2025. We will reach that earlier on. So if we do a steady growth, then we will uh, be a steady growth company. And when you do all these things and we manage to do all these things, I think that we are a good company to be a part of as okay, a so partner and as a customer. Let's just talk about that for one moment, okay? Um, you had the decision and it was over 12 months ago. So Australia started just on 12 months ago. Um, yep. Obviously, the company made a decision prior to that. You've had a, what I call a, a, a good, successful launch here in Australia. Tell me about that point of you making that decision to come into Asia Pacific and some of the steps that you've done that's now ready to make the next move. So Australia, then what was the, the direction you had you know, over 12 months ago? Well, that's a, quite, it could be a funny story, but I think that um, one of the things that I started off doing when nine, month, nine years ago was to debating what kind of strategies should, should Sincino have. And one of those opportunities that you have as a company, and especially in this company, which is really intriguing to me, is that Eric says you can grow the business and you can do that in a smart way. And, um, and that's what we have taken advantage of. So one of the things that we made clear nine years ago, what we were going to establish ourselves in the United States. And we did that about two years later from um, after we've done with, um, with the strategy talks. So I would say that five years ago, I uh, was uh, searching, well, five and a half years ago, we, we were searching for uh, a new board member. And I wanted someone who knows the, knew the industry and I wanted someone to, that knows Asia because we were thinking five, six years ago that we were turn, turning into Asia. And then uh, I uh, asked a good friend of mine that I've um, been working together with, who is a good um, executive search person. So he found a couple of uh, potential guys. And then I, I got Pierre Mortensen, who had been working in this industry and was living in Singapore. Uh, at the, that time, and I actually hired him to be a part of the board so he, I could help knowledge from him or he can help me developing a strategy for, United, for, for Asia. And in the meantime, you need to do stepping step by step. And um, so I would say five years ago, we were starting to think, six years ago, maybe starting to think about what, what we're going to do in entering Asia. And we know it needs... Uh, building blocks so but first we need to be really clever in what we're doing here in scandinavia and we are a big company among the biggest one the largest one here in scandinavia and the nordics i think that we're number three in norway number four number four five in sweden we're number one in finland number one in denmark second or third in in iceland and all those markets and we've been really doing well in Europe, I would say. So expanding when things is great. Are you taking a picture of me or? Yes. Thank you. 
Do you know it's copyright on pictures on me? So you need to pay my wife or... <laughs> so um, eventually, um, we took a decision on opening Australia, I think, three years ago. And it was a building blocks. But now we got more um, experienced resources within the company in IT and marketing. So we have more resources. And when we are growing, we have more uh, resources in terms of investments, money. So we can move faster the next three to five years of moving into new markets. That's why we have a big expansion plans for the next upcoming years, which is amazing and fun. And I think, you know, when you look at that expansion plan and, uh, you know, when you made that announcement that you're actually going to take out a company, buy out a company, okay, uh, in the Asia Rim, can we just talk about that for a moment before we go on to the, the rest of the information? Yeah, well, when you are part of our strategy is to be open to see if there is potential mergers, potential company that will fit our culture. Um, uh, so we got everything in place, I would say, from back office to partners to uh, payment system to marketing, products, production, so everything. But you know that distribution power is one of those things that is really important. And you could always be a little bit intrigued of, um, of, um, of opportunities of new products. But we can make most of the products we want to on our own factory if we have the formulation. And we have probably thousands of recipes of formulations at the factory that we don't use for this moment. So um, uh, buying VMA life as we are doing then we buy uh, three four things i would say um first of all we get some knowledge uh from the from the founder of the company kenneth but also we have a couple good employees so we get like boots on the ground people that knows those markets um you know that's three you need a direct sales license in markets like taiwan Thailand and Malaysia, and he got those licenses. So that takes time and it takes effort and competence to make that happen. And then you need to um, have product registrations and you do all of these things. You need bank accounts. So you buy the infrastructure and the people, uh, but also the distribution power. And we were together in Malaysia and meeting his uh, and BMR leaders, which is a part of the team now. It was great meetings and, and, and they know how to sell. So we kind of uh, starting a little bit ahead. All of the other openings we, we have done, it has been, been organic. So we have a great success in Hungary. Um, uh, it has been organic, it takes a little bit more time. Actually, Hungary went fast, but Germany takes time. All of these markets takes time to build up. Mm. When you're buying a company like that, you get like a fast start or fast track um, to, to build the market. That's yeah. our hope. Mm. And we've been searching for a couple of companies um, the last years, but uh, no one that we did as we ended up here in for VMA. VMA. Look, and, and, and uh, I, you know, certainly once uh, I was brought in on the loop, okay, of the communications, I was quite blown away uh, that that was a company. I thought, wow, what an acquisition this is going to be for the company. So let's talk about Hong Kong and uh, the, you know, the opening of that on the 8th of the 8th of uh, 2020, okay? So the 8th of August, 2020. Your, your process and your goals of uh, doing it right, being on the ground as an operation, uh, having staff on the ground, warehousing, customer support, um, give me your opinion about that marketplace and why is that so important to you? Uh, well, I think we're part of the, the uh, what, one of the reasons why we, we want to do this is because uh, we, we've had great success, as you said, in the opening of Australia and, and uh, a big chunk of the, the revenue and uh, the partners that we got uh, in Australia has been from the Chinese uh, population of Australia. And, and of course, uh, having you on board, Rob, with, you know the Asian market, you know the Australian market. So, so it's like a trampoline into the Chinese market, but also into the Malaysian market, Taiwan, and with VMR. 
that's a big opportunity. And we all know that uh, a big part of the direct sales uh, um, industry or, or sales is coming from the Asian market. The opportunity is large. So that's one of the reasons why we do this. And as every time we are entering a market, we want to do that in a proper, in a real, the, the good way. But we got a lot of experience um, entering new markets with all from logistics. So we centralize a lot of the logistics, uh, but we need to have a warehouse. And then we're debating, me and you now, which warehouse is it going to be. And we know there is a lot of um, technicalities to, to make yeah. sure that you've got the, the right one in place, but we're going to find that out. Uh, boots on the ground, we have VMR team, we have VU on board, so we're going to start slow or with low cost to be efficient, to make sure that we are not like spending money. And if we do this the right kind of way, we will uh, make sure that we can invest and have added uh, uh, person or organization in Hong Kong, but not yeah. in the beginning. That's how we're dealing with things. But hey, we've been investing in IT and payments. So it would take us one day to add on the payment for Hong Kong less than one day because we've done all the investments like the last two years um, centralized. So that's an amazing thing to do. And all these things, when it comes together, you know, it's a project is really going now. Just before I entered this uh, Zoom call, I had a conversation about we needed to translate the, the, the English name of balance oil into Chinese and extend into Chinese or Mandarin, which is... Um, things that you need to experience and understand before you enter a market. But we got three months now left for, for setting that up. It's going to be fun. It's going to be uh, amazing. And I really do hope that uh, I can travel without being a quarantine in Hong Kong so I can be a part of that opening, Rob. I no, will that's, be there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought, how funny would this be, okay, that uh, I end up being the only one that's allowed to travel in Asia and – uh, and I go, well, where, where's my CEO? Where's, where's, my, yeah, where's my founders? Well, they can't. Why do you think it's going to be easier for you entering Hong Kong than me? Uh, what is I'm half point? Asian. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, my plan is to be there. My plan is to be there. But, uh, but you, you know that Hong Kong and Singapore and, and Malay Malaysia is a fully locked down. So yeah. who, who knows? Let's, let's uh, follow the news and, and uh, the guidelines. Yeah, okay. So let's go on to the product side quickly, okay? I just want to spend yeah. one minute on product, if I could. Now, you know, there's a lot of people saying, well, you know, why are we changing the bottles, okay? You know, you've had this, like, this is the 1980s bottle. Why would you move to something that's like 2020s bottle? Uh, well, that's... that's um, so over the years, Rob, uh, we've been investing and growing like... Um, Coming from 15 years and you, we don't have any debt. We don't own any more money. So we're taking care of ourselves. But we've been doing this step by step. So uh, we've been investing in our brand and having a clear brand and a philosophy about brand and design. So this is just like a stepping stone for making sure that we are upgrading ourselves. If you can hold up the new bottles, uh, those are molecules representing the DNA or, or the, the molecules that really is necessary, the essential fatty acids that your body needs. Um, so, um, um, and we should like Extend Plus or Extend or Viva, Protect, all of these boxes is, is improved and it's, it's necessary to improve yourself like a brand. Rob, so that's the, that's the point about that. And we're steady evaluating how we're going to improve those bottles. And it's a unique bottle that is our bottle. So it's an important step to building a global brand. Fantastic. Now, this is the game changer. And again, this is my second part. So first part, guys, was being a publicly traded company. Second part was test-based nutrition. When I yeah. saw the balance test, it was the game changer for me. Doug, talk to me quickly about you know, this test. Well, um, I think it's the who comes first, 
the test or the oil? Well, it's, it's, it's a combination. And we saw quickly, me, Erian, and Hilda, the founders, that it was a perfect match for dye sales and, uh, and, um, and the product because it's like believing in, in uh, nutrition. Every, everyone knows that nutrition is important and eating healthy food is important, but taking a test before and after to really show it off, amazing. But also you needed kind of five minutes to explain people why they should have nutrition or why they should have omega-3s. Most people know, but you can then take the test before and after, which is brilliant in that sense. And, and I think that uh, after now, we've been taking 500, half a million tests, Rob. Think about that in seven years of time. And I think the company that we bought, they spent seven years of having 2,000 tests. So our partners have been amazing in, uh, in taking tests and making sure that we got like a lot of customers and own belief in that. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's the magic, I would say. And I believe in the future, we will have a lot of more tests of proving our products to make sure that people understand because seeing is believing sometimes. I have friends that have been taking the test. Do I really need to take the oil? And then we took a test and I say, I need, <laughs> I need the oil. So it's kind of proven because uh, it's important. So it has been a game changer and it is a game changer. Yeah, no, look at the whole industry. And I think, again, in, in the industry, okay, the wellness industry in particular, uh, these days most people are wanting to see the proof that the product's going to work. And the balance test is a perfect example of a device that can be used within the direct selling industry, within the consumer-based marketing. It's perfect. It is perfect. And um, we're working on uh, uh, some good news about other products and other test methods and different tests. And it's going to be an exciting future for, for everyone who is working within Cincino and in the space of Cincino. Um, because you know, coming into this company, you know that we, everyone says it. But, and of course, you've been in different companies, Rob, and you've been evaluating a lot of companies. And everyone says we have brilliant products. But we are kind of the nerds of the nerds when it comes to product. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not sure how you, the first meeting with the founder, Arian, and myself, I'm not sure if you really believed <laughs> that you understood that along the way now for a year, you, you really know that we care about the products and we really believe in the products. We want to make the best out of the best of the products. So the test is proving that. Yeah. And that's the brilliance of it. Fantastic. Okay, so let's flip back to Hong Kong for one moment because that's the next market that's going to open for us. Um, when we opened Australia, guys, I was blown away. And this is all the different material that's available. Doug, uh, you're in the process now, and I think you're starting to proofread, uh, as in uh, see the, the final copies come out for Hong Kong, China, uh, all being translated into Chinese, okay, into traditional Chinese. Uh, tell me why oh, well, a company would do that. Uh, well, um... I was sure about that one thing and I was wrong eight years ago. I was sure we're only going to have English. And I tried to convince Arian and Hilda and we were kind of, yeah, intrigued by only having one language that we, everyone could use everywhere. And then we, um, since we were in like five, six markets at that time, uh, there was a lot of complaints from the Danish. And the Danish uh, wanted us to proofread the Danish website and the products because there was a lot of misspelling. Yeah. And one of the things that I learned was that when we did all the uh, proofreading and take away the misspelling, they were so much more happy partners and customers. And we increased the sales pretty rapidly because of the languages. Yeah. And after the after the latest years, I'm sure about one thing. Coming from Scandinavia, I'm Norwegian, I'm a Norwegian Viking. You understand that there is only a few people in the world <laughs> understand <laughs> and talk Norwegian. So you have to learn and you need to have different languages. So we need to really be good at this. So that's why 
we are translating everything into different languages. We speak, I'm in the office of Gothenburg now, we speak like 25 different languages here in the office. It is a multicultural global company now. So we need to be specific good in everyone meeting the requirements from customers and partners. That's the only way to be really global professional, in my opinion. So I was wrong eight years ago. I'm pretty sure that I'm on track now. Just taking, taking the time because if you're going to have success and growth, translation and language is important. Fantastic. Absolutely spot on. You couldn't have said it any better. And uh, that's why I love seeing our five key items that are all getting translated right now. Now, Doug. Um, Only question. Do we really need the customer presentation in, in Hong Kong? Or could we just have the emphasis in of just, just kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be huge for us. Let's find out. Doug, now I know that somebody's head did go uh, and you did have to terminate somebody, okay, which is, you know, sad things happen in a company. And I know that you were, you know, either off sick or you, you, were, doing, about? you were doing something uh, on that particular day. The person that approved the April campaigns, how did, how did you let them get away with it? That's all I want to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Was it a Jose or was it you know, a Jacob that, that pushed no, the no, no, no. no uh, if someone would should be should be fired, I think it's gonna be me or Arian, who is the founder, together with Hilda, or both of us. Uh, I I think um, I think we think we we think a little bit differently, me and Arian. I think uh, about this topic in this moment. Everyone is sitting out there. There is an opportunity coming up with the COVID-19. And I'm so pleased, Rob. Yeah. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of being a part of a team, partners, uh, the office, and everyone around Cincino because we really turned this business from being offline to online. And I see yep. all the improvements and I see everything that we do. And it's ne a necessary thing to do. One of the reasons and one of the things you have to remember, this was in the, in the end of March when we saw all the restrictions and the problems. We wanted to make sure that everyone was believing in, in Cincinnati. We wanted to make sure that everyone saw the long-term plan. That's why this campaign is not only for April, it's also for May, yeah. because it's really the building block mm. for May. With 200% ECB for May, if you do the right kind of things in the end of the month here. Uh, or during April. And then we wanted to give back because we were supposed to go to Gran Canaria and everything was locked down. And we wanted to give back something to everyone so they, because both of us, soon we want to see each other. Maybe that would be in Hong Kong, hopefully. But I also want to travel and meet all the partners and get back to normal again. And this is going to be in April in Mexico, 2021. So we want to give something back to them. And I thought that was fair. So that was my, my kind of uh, my decision to, to call. But I would say in general, it is an amazing campaign. Or I will actually ask you, what is, what, is it, what is the thing about the campaign, Rob? Well, the key, the key to my side is um, the ease of just getting a few premier kits okay and getting qualified. Second one is to get on that trip to get yourself to Mexico, you know, the direct the trip, I went on the Bali one and uh, obviously with Gran Canaria I would have been at as well. But I mean, you know, these trips are six star trips, okay? Absolute, and for the nearly 600 plus people that were going to Gran Canaria, they were very disappointed they couldn't do it, but there's a good enough reason. But to get to Mexico, guys, and being part of it, Doug, that is insane. And then you've got the test base. If you wanted to just, uh, you know, qualify yourself there, you can do that as well. So if you're missing a few people, hey, you can get yourself to that 200% easy beat. Now, a couple with that is at the same time, you've got a campaign. And again, I don't know how you did this, but anyway, you know, fast silver, you know, some extra money. Fast gold, extra money. Fast executive, extra money. <laughs> I mean, I don't know whose salary's gone, but I mean, somebody's not getting paid next month. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I, I, mean, think, I think the most important thing now as I said we're debt free Rob yeah so the most one of the things that really costs money is get the um, 
business going again. There's a lot of companies now that are running out. So it is a decision about making sure that we can get on the same kind of level of the growth that we've had the, for the last 12 months. If we can establish ourselves with the same kind of growth in April and May, we are winning the race because we could afford having a couple of good uh, months with growth and at the same time spending a little bit more money on commission. Everyone is worth it. And really show the, the world, uh, people around us, that since you know, we are growing. We don't lay off anyone in this period of time. We are making it. And so to speak, 28th of, uh, of April, no one has been laid off in Cinzino. We are producing products at the factory with, with two shifts. Uh, so there is an amazing growth going on within our company. And we wanted to maintain that for April and May. So that was the reason behind that taking a little bit risk and paying a little bit much, too much in, in a period of time is uh, easy when you get the return on that investment. Yep, fantastic. Then, look, the guys uh, and uh, for the guests that are on the line, please talk to the person that's invited you to the call and get the April campaign print out so you can understand exactly what it is. Doug, the key that you put in that, but is you're actually starting it at the end of April, which is actually one extra week, of qualifying for the extra money. So this is the insane, you know, again, I don't get it sometimes. And uh, I said, when, you know, I, I, I personally rang you and said, Doug, is this right? What I'm reading, is this right? And then I rang Ari and I said, what I'm reading, is this right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I said, I've checked with Doug as well. And he said it was. So, but guys, <laughs> as partners, please understand the power that you've got to have yourself qualified by the 29th, so by tomorrow night. Wednesday night, midnight, you must have yourself qualified for it. And then the 200% ECB kicks in so you can start qualifying for the fast silver, qualifying for fast gold, fast executive. All this extra cash is just sitting there waiting for you with an incredible promotion. So talk to your upline leader. Make a phone call to me. If you're in Australia, pick up the phone and call me. Email me, Facebook me. Whatever you need, I'm here to help you, okay? And guys... You know, Doug, I, I just say this is going to be a game changer for, for May. I mean, you guys, I mean, you, yeah. you've done growth, growth in January, growth in February, growth in March. You know, April, we can't comment on this stage, but, you know, there's been great numbers. May is going to be a game changer. It's going to be huge. And we've gone through one of the most life-changing events in the world. You're yeah. doing a great job as a CEO. And I think that is the most important things for us, to show off everyone around us, I'm going to repeat myself, that we could manage this. And I'm so proud, I have to say, I'm so proud. And we are doing so many things now online, so much more professional, just like for the last two months of experience. And we need to step up the game You've seen a lot of those uh, events uh, going on. And last week, we, we had a big event with Paul Clayton. I think there's like 2,000 that have been seeing that uh, live show now, streamed afterwards, which wouldn't be in our thoughts three months ago. Yeah. So this is going to give us an advantage when we're entering new events. And, and, and of course, we need to improve ourselves. So, so I'm looking forward to when you and Emily are going to make a schedule or a script or a program for, for how we're going to do things online. Uh, but I'm also thinking about production, how we can get production capacity resources from the TV world, producing some of the events that we have. So making it more live and, and take it to a different level or another level, to be, be honest. So I think this is going to give us an advantage. Um, yeah. And, and um, I'm sorry for everyone out there that has been people that – there's a lot of people suffering, Rob. So, yeah. uh, but, uh, and the, the one way to help everyone out there is that we at least don't need aid or, or are laying off people or people having trouble. So, of course, we will be hit it at some point. Some, some, but let's see that if the business is growing – it's amazing for us and the industry and since they know Bickler.
Yeah, and I think I think Doug, just in closing, and then I'll pass the comments back to you. Um, yeah, I, I see Zinzino as a massive lifeline for a lot of people because the company is is so right, the products is so right, the test base itself, the the you know the device itself is right, the systems, the training, the leadership, everything is just right. You know, and then when you come back and, and you do run it very, very tight, I, I say that, you know, quite openly, guys. And that's what I respect about this man so much is that he's not your typical company that, like I've seen before, throwing the Lamborghinis around, throwing the jets around, all that type of stuff. It just doesn't happen because it takes strong leadership. And like you said, Doug, to get through these times and to be able to do compensation plans like the eight April campaigns, okay, that's because you're debt free. You thought about what could go wrong in the future and you planned for things like that. Yeah, you know, I take my hat off to it's you. We, Great timing. It's we, Rob. Yeah. It's we that have made that decision, not only me. And I would love people to buy a Lamborghini, but I think <laughs> they should buy that from their own compensation or com- commission. And then they can they can stripe it uh, as they as they want. But I don't think that we should throw away Lamborghinis. Yeah, look, and uh, guys, in closing, as you can see, Doug is the, the, the networker CEO, okay? He does an incredible job for us. Him and his team uh, that, uh, that are at the corporate office, amazing, amazing group of people. Over to you, Doug, to close out for one minute. Give us some final thoughts. Well, one minute is sometimes a little bit too less to give the final. The only thing I would say is I appreciate being... Um, part of the team and, and everyone who is watching and, and streaming it later. Um, you've done an amazing job uh, during the last uh, two months. Um, I hope everyone is, is safe and um, are taking precautions. That's the number one for me to make sure that everyone out there is safe and, and good. I think um, COVID-19 and the, the, the crisis of COVID-19 is going to last at least for out 2020, so we need to be doing amazingly good online. Um, And we are uh, continuously improving ourselves, and we will do that. And I'm really sure that Cenzino is going to do good during this crisis. And uh, and that's uh, part of the the fun uh, about this uh, talk together with you, is about the campaigns and the points that you made out of that. The campaigns is for using. So use the campaigns. Make sure that you get the, the, um, the restock if, if you don't have the action points ready for, for the 300% DCB for May. Make sure that you are doing incredibly well. This is an opportunity for everyone who is working full-time or part-time or even also for the customers out there because being um, healthy and taking all the nutrients that you need is also an amazing thing for yourself and your body and your family to make sure that you are healthy and staying safe.